You're watching Rewind That with New Edition. Listen, Ricky, all I'm saying is, if I can go and write for y'all, maybe I can come out there and do a few songs with y'all. <laughs> for the fans. You remember that, baby? Man, I don't know about all that, Bob. Our set list is already worked out. A lot of frictions was, prior to the tour, especially with Bobby, unfinished or unspoken, un you know, things that he felt prior to when he left and all, none of that stuff ever being addressed. When we came together for the Home Again album, it was the right time, but the, the wrong attitudes, you know, because everybody had their egos that were, you know, I know I had mine. Um, and plus it was just, I was just, I was crazy at that point. I believe I was married. It was like I was in, I felt I was in another bracket. I was in another realm than, than you know, doing this, doing the Home Again tour, but missing them again, I, like I said, missing them just made me just say, let's, let's, let's go, let's, let's do it. And boy, that was the tour from hell. The fight definitely took place, and uh, that home again to it was just such a disaster all the way around. I mean, there was so much madness going on. I had maybe three to four people on my bus. Everybody had their own bus, and you could see 15, 20, 30 people sometimes. But I mean, you, every day there was new people coming around that needed tickets or passes, and you kept going, who the hell is all these people? It was insane. Everybody lost their mind. The way I um, did what I did, um, I was trying to prove a point that, you know, a lot of the ticket sales are not just new edition, you know, a lot of ticket sales are Bobby Brown also. So, you know, in, in certain occasions, you know, yeah, I would I would not show up at all or, or show up late and um, go out there, do what I do and not care about what anybody else thought, you know. And plus the promoter, the promoter was, you know, I mean, Al Heyman was was paying me a lot, a lot of money. I was getting kickbacks, I was getting, you know, um, monies from Coca-Cola, who was the sponsorship, you know, so a lot of things was going on that they didn't know about. Um, so I was, you know, I was on my high horse. <laughs> and the craziest thing about it for me was my story was, you know, I know there were some things that happened that, you know, uh, personal with each individual, but I was still one of the only ones, the only one, that showed up for every single show, never missed a show. There's stuff that ain't even in the movie. Me and Bob got into it in front of Whitney and Miss Jackson in um, Vegas and to Thomas and Mac, because he wanted to start the show without Ron. And I told him, we ain't starting a mother thing without Ron. It wasn't a water hose, it was a fire extinguisher. But um, yeah, yeah, I did get mad that, you know, Ron walked on the stage and, you know, they, they were, Ron wasn't even there yet. So he was late that night and, and Mike and Ricky was there, so I kept going. There wasn't no reason for me to stop if, you know, they're telling me keep going because Ronnie ain't here yet. So when Ron got there, Ron didn't know that they was telling me to keep going because he was late. So it just played, it just, it plays out that, you know, I was probably an asshole. No, you're an asshole, Bob. Yeah, whatever. I always said to myself that, you know, maybe as brothers we should have probably said something to him, maybe gave him some brother help, because whatever he was doing, it was working against us, it wasn't working for us, it was just tearing everything apart, you know, and, and, and sometimes that happens, and tough love should have jumped in, and we didn't, instead of going to it, everyone was just like, who gives a fuck, we, you know, we just thinking, stupid. After that run, went into our little cupboards away from each other, and didn't do anything with each other for a while. <laughs> that was that's what happened after that one. Everybody just had bad taste in their mouth for doing stuff together as a team. What I uh, despised more than anything for a long time, even with the group, was that I felt like I paid the price for everybody else's sins because 
I showed up and did my job every day. So when life got turned upside down, our finances got crazy and everything got, was, got ugly, I felt like, why am I paying for something that I didn't do? So for a long time, a long time I had a, a real serious issue with this group and vowed to, I, I, I'd be honest with you, I wasn't sure if I would ever get back or do something with New Edition again. I really wasn't at that point, point in time. Are we in the right place for the New Edition reunion? Hey, hey, hey. A lot of conflicts that we had with each other are being worked out as we're doing this movie. Because we didn't know what the other side was thinking. It was a lot of breakdowns in communication. Like, wow, that's what was going on in your world? That's what you thought at the time? Like, oh man, I didn't know that. And so it's like, it's almost therapy, in a sense, for a lot of us to be able to talk about these things and, you know, bring up old wounds and, you know, be able to process certain things that we weren't able to do at the time. I host steadfast to, you know, everything that, that has happened in our career because, you know, without without all the without all the without all the downs, there wouldn't have been so many ups. And we had a lot of ups. So, you know, us 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 getting this chance to show our story right now is the best thing that could happen to New Edition because we get to look at ourselves and know what we did wrong and know where we went wrong and correct it.